Okay, today we're going to learn about Live Trace in Adobe Illustrator. So here's a Photoshop file that I placed into Illustrator. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like in Photoshop. So here's how it looked when it originally came out of my camera. So in order to get a good trace, I had to do a little bit of work here in Photoshop. So I played with my adjustment levels, etc. Uh, but you'll find your own way. All right, let's go back to Illustrator. Here's my graphic. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to press the Live Trace button. I'm going to get the warning. Just say OK. All right, so now it's doing its trace. So here's the default settings. This is just a black and white uh, trace. Uh, but let's go to our options here and let's make this a little bit better. I'm going to click this guy. First thing I want to change is the threshold. Well, we're using a black and white mode, so things just become black or white. The threshold controls what becomes black and what becomes white. So anything above a certain level will become white. Anything below a certain level will become black. So we're going to do a little bit of changes here because we can see we have a little problem here. We don't have a nice um, continuous line here. So uh, this threshold is going to help us out. I'm going to bring this up pretty high to a little over 200 here. Yeah, something like that's good. I'm going to hit the preview. Now sometimes this preview will slow things down. Here we go. All right, so you can see that filled in a little bit better. The next thing you may want to change is the blur. This blurs the underlying image, and this will help you make uh, smooth, smooth edges. Sometimes your edges can be a little bit rough. This will help smooth it out. But I'm just going to make a very slight change here. I only changed it a couple of clicks with the up arrow here to about 2.2 .2 pixels, and that should be good. All right, hit trace, and here's what we get. Okay, the next thing I want to do with this graphic is I want to color it in. So we could do that by going up here to the top and clicking on the Live Paint button. And this will convert this into a Live Paint group. And let's see what happens here. We're going to have a little, couple of little problems here. All right, it's been converted. I'll zoom out a little bit. Get my live paint bucket tool. And let's see where our boundaries are. So you can see we're going to have a little problem in a couple of spots here. His robe is not too bad, but like on his face here, you can see it's spilling over. So we can fix that pretty easily. All right, this is still selected. I'm going to go up here to this icon up here. Now this icon is going to become our gap detection. Let me turn gap detection on. Right now it's set to small gap, so let's take a look and see what it did. You see a whole bunch of red dots now. This is filling in the gaps. It's not actually drawing a line, it's just making an invisible boundary so we can uh, color these areas in without it spilling over. So let's click OK, see what we get. All right, I'll zoom in. Let me get my paint bucket. All right, let's try filling in his face here with this flesh color I have already made. I'm going to pause the video and do a little coloring. Okay, I have them mostly colored in, uh, but we're going to have another little problem here. Let's zoom in here. Uh, say I want to color in this area here above his eye. If I click in here, we're going to have a problem. You can see this is spilled over into the background, so I wanted to fix that. Let's undo that. I'm going to go back to my gap detection. Let me select them with my regular tool. 
click the gap selection options. Now this time I'm going to change it to a medium and see what happens. All right, so it looks like it's going to do it. You can see over here it filled in the gap. Again, this is just an invisible barrier. Let's say OK. And now I can zoom in here, see what we got. All right, so that's pretty good, actually. Another technique we can use is we can actually change the shape of my drawing here. So you can just edit this, uh, select an anchor point, and move these anchor points around. So now watch, if I move one of these anchor points, it's going to change my gaps here. Give it a second. And you can see it fills in a little differently. All right, so we're mostly done. We're going to have one other problem, though. I created a red background layer. And now you can see our other problem here. These white areas, say you don't want these areas to show. You want the background to show through. We can also get rid of these with our paint bucket. Let me get my paint bucket again. Now all we have to do is use a fill of none to get rid of this. Change this to none. I can click in these white areas. And they're gone. So oh, I'll get this little area here. Another thing you can do to get rid of stuff like these little black dots here is you can just select them and just hit the delete key and get rid of them. It'll take a second to update. There we go. And the same thing with these guys here. You can just select them and delete them and they're gone. All right, so that's pretty much live trace for now. So go home, give it a try, and I'll see you later.